Hey friends, my name's Georgie. It's such a joy to welcome you to the Just Breathe podcast where I'll be talking all things breathing to help empower you guys to use the power of your breath to harness your bodies and minds. In today's episode, I'll be chatting to Summer Stralin. Summer is a four-time Olivier-nominated actress, yoga teacher and creator of the Stralin Collective, an online platform providing performance and wellness classes from some of the world's leading professionals. Summer was so generous in sharing her personal journey with breath and spirituality, We also got talking about the meaning of connection, especially in the midst of a global pandemic, as well as female empowerment. I'm so excited for you to listen in on this one. I think you're going to really, really enjoy it. I hope you finish listening to this and feel like an absolute goddess. I know I did. (laughs) If you haven't already, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let's keep building that strong breathing community. Let's keep connecting people. Let's keep empowering people through the most universal language there is, the breath. Without further ado, let's get right on with the conversation. This is episode 12 of Just Breathe with Summer Stralen. Hey Summer, welcome to the Just Breathe podcast. Thank you so much for coming and chatting to me. It's such a pleasure to have you here. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you. And I'm so glad that we met. um, I know. Randomly, but... um, I know. Well, hilariously, I have met you many times before, but from watching you perform, because (laughs) um, you, I think, were the first leading lady I actually saw in Top Hat. Oh um and so yeah I have I have been an admirer of, you, of yours from afar for a long time but to actually meet now properly and share something slightly different in sort of spiritual practices and and breathing is is something that's a really wonderful sort of full circle which is so appropriate because of course um I was at your um full moon women's circle last night which was so incredible which of course we'll talk about um but firstly where where are you calling in from you're not in the UK right now right I'm in Massachusetts I was living in New York and uh, was about Mm. to do a job there right um, April so um and I only moved in November so (laughs) I kind of feel a bit like I've cursed America (laughs) 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 but yeah so it's been a year since I've been home um my goodness uh, and I mean home I I home is where the heart is it really you know I really it really is that. yeah but, but at the same time and I've never really felt like the UK was my home like my spiritual home I've that's never interesting really felt, I've always felt quite um uh, not very connected to it yeah um so and America's no different to be honest you know but I, I moved here to to see if that was if this was the grounding place but um but actually what I realized is that it's all about grounding wherever you are Um, Yeah, that's an interesting point, actually. You can travel wherever you want, right? But until you ground with yourself, you'll always feel a little bit lost. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just, uh, speaking of that, there's actually, I just realised I've got Native American music playing in my... (laughs) (laughs) That's Um, so appropriate. (laughs) I know, right? Um, Well, that is the thing, though, I am quite connected to, is that Native American um, culture. Um, Yeah. Because we all have it you know in Mm. some we're all connected in some way but um but yeah so I'm in Massachusetts staying at a friend's house who had a place to stay for me um and um yeah staying here for for Christmas and everything which is kind of going to be strange but uh, you know and everyone's sort of there are a lot of people who I know who aren't going home you know or going to their families and uh yeah so it's we're there's a lot of people who are connected in that way now you know Mm. we we used to be connected in that you're going home for Christmas or whatever whereas now it's like we're all connected in on a more um uh, you know we're connected by this global pandemic you know yeah yeah the the pausing of the world right the the great pause that has actually brought about so much 
beauty, I think, really. Of course, there's been so much tragedy, but where there's dark, there's always light. And so it's it's yeah. actually brought about something quite lovely. But I want to dive in anyway and really get into your journey and sort of coming from this amazing performing family of course you know um I have been following the Stralin sisters for years and been looking up to all of you as, as growing up as a performer as well and so I'm sort of fascinated by how sort of being really at the top of your game in performing when the spiritual practices and yoga and came into that and and where you are now and and what that transition is with your journey and I, I'm really interested to know if well you're... it's a long yeah. one and you will probably talk about that <laughs> it'll be the whole podcast but um, <laughs> I fine. feel like I have kind of I've talked about it a lot recently because yeah. of the Stalin Collective that I've set up because yeah um because of what connection that has for me and yes basically what it is 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 that I started my sister Scarlett has always mm -hmm. been um uh an inspiration but also I mean obviously when you're growing up you're like my sister's not an inspiration you know <laughs> <laughs> um I do realize that she sort of she did inspire me mm. to do to be as good as her and to be um and she always made it look so fun right. and she started she she's always been quite spiritual we went we all went um to a convent school for our for sort of early years from three yeah. till ten and um it was a, a convent school so there were nuns there when we were there there weren't when, right. when um the others went but um but yeah so so we did grow up doing that you know doing yeah. prayer and hymns and my my mother's quite um spiritual and quite religious yeah like, not religious but christian you know yeah and um and so I kind of shunned it for a while and I was very mm -hmm. atheist and and my sister Scarlett would was sort of into angels and yeah. and lots of self-help and Louise yeah. Hay and mm. you know um, all of and affirmations and I was like oh god you just need that because you because <laughs> you're not happy you know right right um and and then and then I met Sierra Bogus actually in Love oh. Never Dies and she gave me the power of now or she told me about the power of now right um because I hadn't been happy I had been getting jobs and doing jobs but never really being present happy in the present moment because right. from the dynasty thing um it was always striving for perfection rather wow. than rather than enjoying the moment so yeah. You know, it was, and and in the industry, in the in show business, not a lot of people do enjoy the moment because usually it's a means to an end. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this job so that I get that job, and then I'm going to get that job from that job. And actually, I think that's the the wrong mentality um, yeah. to have because it actually prevents you from one enjoying it and two doing a, a connected and present job. Yeah. So, um, that I, I I call it the, uh, the the phrase I've been using is um, I suffered with perfectionist syndrome. And <laughs> I could so I, relate to that. Yeah, I'm sure many of us can. Yeah, of course. And I mean, you know, because when you're doing ballet, for instance, mm -hmm. if you train in ballet or you train in dance or whatever, it's about training the minutia, like mm -hmm. the tiniest thing. If yeah. you just put your weight a tiny tiny bit back you'll do five pirouettes if you get it just that little bit forward you'll only do one you know right. or, or less you know so it's 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 always that striving for that perfection of of of, of um alignment yes and and what i realized from reading the power of now was that that alignment is in the now mm. and if you're in the now you'll then you're not looking forward and you're not looking back and you're not going oh well I didn't do that pirouette you're going yeah. well I'm doing this pirouette now and I'm doing this one now and this one now and you know it then sort of follows on to recovery and you think about one you know to 12 steps and mm. one day at a time for for addicts and it, it is that I mean it, it's actually one moment at a time really yeah that yeah have to, have to um 
have to live in mm-hmm. in order to to um to be content i believe yeah so that was the kind of thing that was 2010 wow and then it sort of grew from there um, right and then i and then i had some experiences with people mm-hmm. that i hadn't been open to before because i was very much like yeah protective and shielding because right. i didn't want to give my heart or you know yeah. show show what you're talking about this vulnerability yeah. yeah um and and in the industry um because it is a patriarchal system mm-hmm. so far yeah it's changing i hope slowly <laughs> surely. yes um, because of that patriarchal system it is very much results led so unless you're giving results people don't want to know they don't they don't care yeah you know and that is a that it does come from you know a very positive thing about the patriarchy the reason men are like that is because women aren't right we balance each other out we are nurturing we are forward thinking we're all that men are very much in the moment need to get this yeah now and you know i'm i'm not obviously evolution is is a thing and we've all evolved from that but it does come back to does go back to neanderthal of us being in the cave and then being you know in that adrenaline state and yeah and how we dealt deal with those kind of states yeah um so i realized that so uh, i uh, did lots of mental help self-help stuff yeah then i also realized that it was in my actual physical health as well that right from my mental health was affecting my physical health so I had of course yeah I mean I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't uh and I'm not um aggressively got an eating disorder or whatever but you know I've had I've been through those those times of looking at my body as a different entity to my brain and to my mind and yeah. to my spirit. Yeah. And, um, and when I sort of learnt, you know, I've read many, many, mm, I've not read many books, but the ones that I've had, I have many thoughts on. Yes. And I have many right. tools from those books that I've, that I take. Yeah. And also my, it's sort of given me a thirst for knowledge that I didn't have before mm. because I felt I knew everything about uh-huh. theatre because I'd been in it since I was three. Yeah. So, and, and because I had that shield of like, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm what I'm doing is working. So I just need to do that. Right. Actually, it just pushed me further and further down a hole of not really knowing who I was. Do you think you kind of lose sight at that point of, of the root of, what performing was for you in the first place? I, um, that's a good question, especially for me. And it is a very, uh, I give a different answer, I think, to a lot of people and is that mm. I was never connected to that route in the first place. Mm. It was all like, you just do it. Yeah, that's what you do. And Not, so- you do it and you look this way and it's for this and it, this is what you, whereas I think my other sisters somehow especially Scarlett and Z, I think they somehow were connected to it. Mm -hmm. And I think you either are or you aren't. Yeah. Um, And so I've been actually talking to a friend recently about how I never dance for myself. Like I never do. I never, I don't enjoy it. I, because now I can't do it without that self-awareness. And it's, and it's something that I'm now going to be working on Mm. in my own life of like actually trying to move my body in a way because ultimately it probably looks pretty good you know (laughs) right 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 for me it's still that perfectionist syndrome of like if I'm not if I'm I I just the thought of doing it and no one watching or it it just it just doesn't compute for me wow that's interesting yeah Yeah. I mean I've I've been on a similar journey myself in terms of moving that I know I love to move and I certainly lost my relationship with dance over the last few years as I converted into more of a straight acting side, but I was still moving my body. And actually that's when I really started to dance from my core, but I was like, no, I'm not dancing. I'm just moving. I'm not doing any, I'm not dancing. I don't, mm. I don't do a single pirouette or a, a move. I'm, I'm just moving. 
but it feels right. really good. And actually, it looks a hell of a lot better <laughs> than it did when I danced because it, it it's just connected and it's it's in it's intentional in a way that I'm just so present and coming back to the analogy of ballet I suppose the best pirouette you'll ever do is when you're not trying you're not thinking right you just sort of you're like one last try and you just sort of do it and then one two three four five there you are and you didn't even yeah. think because yeah. you're just trusting your core and your body and I, I think that's a very interesting journey especially for those in the creative industry that you're right is so results driven and there's so much rejection that you build up such a thick wall Mm. Of, of that like no I I am good enough and I'm going to keep working until I prove I'm good enough because I am and I'll mm. keep doing it mm. and and then I'll keep getting chosen this being yeah. chosen it's like well what if you were already chosen right <laughs> yeah right I mean from what you were saying then it was in my in my brain I I, I have apparently I have ADD and and, <laughs> and things so my psych I have a psychiatrist who is who is totally. um, uh, diagnosed me with that so I mean I what a relief to to know yes absolutely it really it really is but I do mm -hmm. find it difficult to listen so I have to really actively listen yeah um, and um a, a thought that did come out of that then was that um I'm actually very connected sexually mm. so and um and it's not so much connect it's not so much sexual it's more it's more intimacy yeah um, and, and that connection between and an, with an intimate partner mm. I find very easy to get with a lot of people yeah like, not that I have lots of partners not that <laughs> no. but no. when I connect to people yeah I can get very deep very quickly because I yeah. enjoy that yeah and so that's also why I'm like now kind of thinking about doing psychology and psychiatry and you know mm. things like that because because I love it when you know and I think that's also why the industry for me sort of um uh quenched that thirst because when you are dancing on your own in front of people you're getting that exchange because if right. they would then clap and then I would get it and then it would be so it is that connection with people and then you come out of the stage door and they're like oh my god that was gorgeous and I'm like great oh my yeah. god <laughs> you know, like so it's that kind of I think it you know and and so also I I do think that art is a connective it's helping people connect to their emotions yeah and so the for the artists especially in shows it was about connecting to that community of artists that we all had this little secret that we were we were showing the you know a, each audience mm. and that's what I as a as, as a director that's what I do is that right. I say we all have a we have this secret and we're going to just share it with these people and this is and that's why every single show is so is so brilliant and so yeah. can be mind-blowing even if you're doing nine to five you know like not that's bad but you know yeah something that's not necessarily people really deep things or, yeah. yeah you know like it it all can have that that magic mm. of giving to an audience and yeah and the thing with the patriarchal system being you have to stay in a contract for six, for eight, for a year and even if you hate it you can't leave right. <laughs> you know right. and all of that sort of thing it just doesn't work no. in my opinion it doesn't no. work for artists and i have now stopped going oh i'm just in musical theater i'm going i am in musical theater where i combine dancing which is created with breath I can't dance if I don't have breath right. I can't sing if I don't have breath and I can't right. act if I don't have breath if I'm not breathing at that you know at any moment we don't have life yeah. <laughs> you know and that's very important and yeah. having the ability to be able to go I'm just gonna take a moment to think about this am I yeah. having a good time no is it okay if I move on because actually someone else might come in and be like this is the best thing that's ever happened but right the results driven thing of you know it it has to be a year because this is the most economical thing right like, you're not it, in the long run it's not economical because the show won't run as long if you've got yeah. people in it who aren't enjoying themselves who aren't breathing properly right you're in, like i've i've been in that situation where i've been so anxious 
that I've just been like wow. this the whole time and not been able to just give. Right. Because I've been so t- protective. And, right. And that's, you know, it's all of that power of now. Yeah, of course. That's where it came from, in answer to your question. Yeah. That is where it came from, was like, right. oh, I'm breathing in this moment. Right, you know? right. And um, then going into the, the yoga, because, of course, that's a embodied breathing practice almost you know where you are moving through yeah. your body well, working with good, the breath exactly that was a sort of good transition I think for me because obviously having that kind of body dysmorphia thing for many many years yeah um, it was a it was a, a a nice transition um and and when I first started doing yoga I loved it because I was really good at it <laughs> compared to everybody else and and I was like you know looking you know on my map looking at people yeah. um to be you know and and unfortunately because of results 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 yeah in the system it's now become about who can do a handstand on a mountain uh, on, a, yes. on a pencil um yeah with you know gorgeous 17 necklaces on and rings you know yes. like looking stunning instagram know. yoga right correct and that's and that takes away from the breath and the moment and the, you know, and, and it, the prana. it's an end as it, the prana, the life force. And it's, and it's, it is a means to an end because these people do want to share what they have experienced ultimately. And what yeah. you experience in yoga is a physical and mental stillness when you get it, you know, and yeah. yoga means to bring comfort and steadiness. And, you know, and a lot of the time everyone's like, mm. you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> warrior two, like, no, yeah, like, shaking. You know, whatever it is, wherever, you, if, if yeah. this isn't comfortable, go to the comfortable place and breathe. And actually you'll find that it's easier to then go a little bit deeper and mm. then go a little bit deeper. But it's the patient, you know, it's about patience and, and we're not taught to be patient. We're taught that we should get results now. I mean, in this day and age, it's it's supposed to all be instant, right? With contactless payments and with, you know, Deliveroo, everything is instant. The selective C sections, so, right? You know, selective, like now <laughs> I want to have my I want to have my baby on the twenty sixth because I've got. Oh, that's amazing! So I get, that's that's what it's called. That's what it's called in the in medicate in the in the medical. A uh, selective. So you can do that. I didn't even know you could do that now. Selective cesarean section. Yeah. <gasps> So you get, wow. you know, but obviously right now that's not happening. No. And, um, and yeah, so, it, and I, so yeah, that's, 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 um, with my, with yoga, it, it, it has become a meditative practice for me because I don't, because it's not dancing yeah. and it's different, you know, like you're meant to be more parallel than you are in dancing and make you know like not doing a ponche you know like yeah yeah you you know putting your hip up it's all about yeah. like the it's about the health of your yeah. vessel so that you can then give what you what your light and your gift is yeah that you've been given whatever that may be even yeah. if that's you know being if that's a, being a teacher or being um, a, a monk or being you know whatever it is mm. that is your light and it's it's working out giving yourself the time and the patience to work that out with no pressure and I think that's actually what the pandemic has done for me right. yeah it's gone I've got no pressure to be I mean apart from sort of money pressures yeah I've got no pressure to be in a show because there are none and yeah. I'm like oh okay I can have a moment to just go what is it that I really want to do yeah. um and it is definitely to do with that it's definitely to do with art because I'm such an emotional person and yeah. I'm an empath and I feel energy and I fe- you know I walk into a room and I can feel energy yeah like, oh where some people don't some people just go everything fine you know like and I, I sometimes absolutely envy those people. Uh, I, yeah, I, uh, I can definitely, definitely think, relate to that. Yeah. But I think there is a certain amount that people also go, oh, I feel a bit, bit funny here, but never mind. We'll just pretend that it's not happening. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, like, I, I do, sort of, 
bring up the question there that are we all emotional beings but actually some choose to cover it up more than others or some choose to lock out their emotion but or is it just who they truly are I don't, I don't have an answer but I don't know I have a feeling that it's um and and from just things that I've read it's usually because of the blocks that, yeah. they've, that they've built from traumas that they've had you know um of you know walking into a room and their mum and dad having a row or yeah or uh you know something like that and then they've gone okay well if I just make it happy then and then they and once that person comes in the room they stop fighting and so they they go oh if I walk into a room and I'm happy then they're going to stop fighting you know and so then they bring that to their lives and and then start and then they just block it off block that that place in their mind off so yeah. Uh, yeah and it's all about I mean personally I, I believe in sort of chakras and and the different energy sp spaces up through your through your spine and, and yeah all of that. um and I'm, and I'm looking more into it um because I also think there's no smoke without fire agreed <laughs> agreed there's gonna be, be something in this and I have been a skeptic I have been an atheist so I do have a an analytical brain on it i'm not just like yeah, yeah you know, you're just done clouds <laughs> you know yeah. I mean, as much as i love doing that too yeah i've been in that experience and i've and i felt that light and i felt that connection with it with nature and i felt that connection with other beings having no judgment around anything like a like a yeah. tree yeah. um but then i've come away and i've gone wait what was that was that my brain was that this was that, that? you know and yeah but because I've experienced it I'm like no it just it's just that's just the experience that you had and and if it is something scientific yeah so be it but until they can you know it's like with afterlives if 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 they could prove that we don't have an afterlife then I'd believe that right but they haven't proved it yet yeah as soon as they prove it I'll be like cool science yeah but you know yeah. but there's like, a beauty in not knowing too I think there is there is some there is some beauty in not knowing as well. But I, I wanted to ask you, uh, when we were talking about the yoga before and you're talking about that position and shaking in that position, and then when you brought up that uh, the fire sort of element, do you think there is that element of yoga and also the practice of life as well in, in sitting in that discomfort, that there's such an importance there as well in actually, if you are shaking or something is uncomfortable, to relax into it but maybe even to sit in those sensations as well not just in yoga practices but sometimes like I'm sure many people listening have faced in a lockdown some uncomfortable truths that have come up from that stillness and space that we found that actually you have no choice mm -hmm. but to sit in but sometimes it can be the best thing in the world right yeah but I think with yoga and people being in that shake place mm. is that if they're in that shake place they don't have to be still yeah they don't right. have to be in that place yeah and that's where people are they're constantly doing this mm. so they don't have to sit in that discomfort the discomfort yeah. is in stillness it, yeah but, you know the 100 percent. people can't meditate yeah or people who say they can't meditate I'm like okay you can sit still correct you're not in pain you can sit on a chair for 10 minutes yeah, yeah physiologically you can sit right yeah so you can do that <laughs> okay, cool. so or for a minute just yes. a minute you know oh, i can't stop thinking okay well just sit here and we'll just just keep thinking it doesn't mean you have to do anything about it <laughs> you know like See what happens I, yeah so that's what you know so i think people stay in the shake because they okay. don't want to just that's interesting their body tell them actually what is wrong what will know? happen if i do stop yeah yeah wow. and have a think it's powerful and, and actually hear and actually listen to what your gut and your intuition and your psyche is saying to you because yeah. so often we do the opposite mm -hmm. and then realize in hindsight that that wasn't the best thing to do you know um or you know everyone go oh, I just knew it I just knew that would happen yeah okay well then why did you not listen because you didn't take enough time because that because you know I've done it with boyfriends all the time right. it's, it's a perfect example of going like yeah it's not really quite right but you know it's okay but it's it's really nice it's really I'm enjoying myself so yeah, yeah. 
and that little tiny nugget is what you should listen to. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really quite right, but it, but it's fine. No, it's not quite right. No, but it's not quite right. And there's a reason for that. But it's um, uncomfortable. It's un- Yeah, th- it's uncomfortable to go, oh, we have to break up. Yeah. Why? We're having such a good time. I know, but there's just something telling it's- me. And that's the thing. <laughs> like now, anyone who I date is really in for it because I guess <laughs> I literally, I'm like, yeah, my gut's just telling me no. Like, I'm, yeah, we're having a great time, but my gut's just telling me, they're like, oh, so you're going to listen to your gut? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but could you, um, what was a hundred? It's been a hundred percent right. Yeah, every time. So, right now, you know, from experience, and that's what experience brings.